In this update, the tropics are really starting to heat up as we're now officially in peak hurricane season. At the same time, we've got a pretty significant cooldown coming for the U.S. and some beneficial rains as we'll be watching Lee every step of the way. So let's take a look at the satellite picture this morning. And wow, there is powerful Hurricane Lee and there is Margo actually right behind it. That's also intensifying possibly into another hurricane. We also have new convection down here into the Caribbean. And yet there's two other systems as the National Hurricane Center has also highlighted that's actually coming off the coast of Africa. And we'll be having to watch this trailing in the wings of Lee coming into next week as well. So let's take a look at where we've been so far because this has not been kind of a normal September. It's been plenty warm, if not hot, in a lot of areas to start off the month of September. These are the temperature anomalies all the way through the first nine days. And yeah, well above average across the Great Lakes and further south into the Southern Plains. Look at that, It's that, that's hard to do to get 11 degrees above average overall over a nine day period in Texas. They've been intense heat down there and out west, yes, you have been cooler and that's gonna be the beginning stages of what's to come heading into next week because we do have a trough coming in from the Great Lakes. We'll have Northwest flow. We'll finally have that ridge of high pressure backing off towards into Mexico. As much of this area actually will be below average for a good chunk of the week. Of course, as we'll be watching Lee every step of the way. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content. So let's take a look at the setup going forward on the water vapor imagery. For today, we'll start to see that first impulse of energy coming in from the Northwest, right? They're sharing some of that cooler air, but that also means there's cooler air aloft and we could be seeing some severe storms really kind of break out. Even some big time hell producers break out in portions of the Texas Panhandle. There's the eye looks to reform into Lee as the now that is looking to as some of that shear starts to subside and all indications that's going to continue to re-strengthen out there into the Atlantic. But yeah, there's that pulse of energy coming in from the northwest today with that cool front that first initial cool front will have that disturbance trailing behind it we've got the lift associated with we got the colder air aloft that means big time hell producers down this corridor into the dodge city area into the texas panhandle those could be some two inch variety type hail some dangerous golf ball even possibly up to tennis ball size hail with these supercell thunderstorms into the heat of the afternoon into the uh, evening time frame, but we'll have the trough coming in from you know, into the Great Lakes and add ahead of it into the Northeast. You're gonna get some pretty good rain producers this afternoon as well. So portions into West Virginia, back into the Virginia region, into Pennsylvania, up here into New Jersey, up you know going into upstate New York, all along the coast here in New England, up here into Maine, yeah, you could be looking at some, you know, very heavy rain at times as this system will be moving across, you know, from from west to east. But that brings down the cooler air as well. And this is kind of the just first indications of that rapid change, right? So this whole area has been obviously well above average, right? You've seen the temperature anomalies for the first nine days. That's gonna be some welcome relief in sight, dropping that cooler air further south into the Great Lakes, into the middle of the country. That will meet up across portions of Oklahoma, into the Texas region, into New Mexico, and that'll eventually start to creep into the portions of North Texas as well, with the kind of the first round of showers and thunderstorms. And it's all because of this southern jet stream is starting to get a little bit more active, you know, right? So El Nino is actually finally showing up in the cards as we'll have that trough dig down a little bit further south 
right? And we'll have these pulses of disturbances coming in off the subtropical jet stream. And then you kind of get these overrunning type conditions. And that's what you need to ring out the precipitation in some of these areas where a lot of the layers in the atmosphere has just been exceptionally dry for September standards. And that's why you've been seeing that record heat as of late. But that has gone bye-bye, folks. And that gets replaced with much cooler conditions and rain much needed rain across these regions into the four corners region you know back into new mexico fish tailing into oklahoma into texas and there is powerful hurricane lee folks possibly down to a 928 millibar low pressure maybe back up to a category four if not maybe a category five again by the time we head into tuesday wednesday of next week so we'll be watching this closely and we'll break down the details for you uh at, at the end of this video but man going into uh tuesday right so this is your you've got that trough coming in from the from the great lakes right so that squeezes out more more precipitation and then we've got these pulses of energy that come across the, the subtropical jet ringing out precipitation across the four corners regions that gets into the Texas panhandle and eventually squeezes off into portions of the Dallas Warworth Metroplex replaced by cooler air, right? So as we get deeper into the week, these temperature anomalies, by the time we head into Wednesday, there'll probably be about, I don't know, about 100 million Americans, about one third of, of the US actually below average. I mean, that's something we haven't seen in a long time. It's starting to look like September, folks. And so that cooler air will be funneling further south the deeper in the week you get. And that's just going to be a welcome relief in sight. And it's going to be forming and bringing the rain. So the, the, the more impulses of energy these, this produces, the further south it gets. And look at the eye, folks. I mean, that is some insane stuff. Look at the eye showing up on the water vapor imagery by midweek for Lee. <laughs> this could be an intense storm. And because of the slowness that we talked about yesterday, this is rapidly slowing down. That opens the door for the United States as we head into the to this weekend so that is deeply concerning going forward and we'll break down the reasons why but look at that cooler air right look at that colder air coming in what those are september type numbers folks so you know we're these are high temperatures on wednesday we're talking 70s if not 60s in cross portions of the great lakes the middle of the country I mean, even some 60s showing up on the map into portions of Kansas and uh, 70s, if not some portions of 60s for highs, folks, into the Oklahoma region. Look at that 81, 82 degrees in Dallas. You just hit 110 the other day. So that's a 28 degree drop. So that's a significant change and a very different air mass coming for next week. And we'll have more pulses of energy, I think. The most active time across the southern plains is probably going to be thursday because look at the vertical velocity index that's a lot of upward rising motion air that's something i've actually haven't seen ac across this region since june things have rapidly changing in a big way so now all those pulses of energy will you know you know will uh, moisten up all layers of the atmosphere so by the time that other disturbance comes in by thursday that's going to be prime conditions for heavy rain across these regions of course there'll be lee still out there that's this is thursday folks we got a long time to track lee and because it's it's slowed down even further now so but yeah, so look at that, folks. There's a slight risk for excessive rainfall across these regions that just desperately need the rain into southern Oklahoma and the North Texas, even portions of central Texas. This is music to your ears down there, folks, as all these, a lot of these areas are into exceptional and extreme drought across these regions so and it doesn't come all at once it comes in like you like it not with the flood it's a trickle right you get monday you get tuesday you get wednesday by thursday you'll have the heavier rain but it's a little bit different it's kind of spread out that's all that's what you kind of want if you're in a drought so it actually soaks into the so the soil down there so it's beneficial and it doesn't just get all run off so 
here's the setup that's concerning as we go into this weekend folks so we're gonna have this last disturbance right so we're gonna have this last disturbance come across all week long we've got a significant trough you know pushing in that cooler air and look where lee is potentially by friday right this is down to potentially a 955 low pressure bona fide major hurricane if not a category four hurricane off the coast into the northeast right and because of the slowness that we talked about yesterday the trough may that they will be getting all that colder air this week but you know by the time we head into to friday and saturday it actually might swing across so in the big picture here there's lee there's margo right we're not concerned about margo even though it might be the same intensity because it's just heading out in the open waters and there's possibly lee's replacement as a lot of the guidance has this continuing to rapidly intensify as well and taking almost kind of a similar track that lee has so after we get done with lee we'll be having to watch this storm as well definitely pretty closely but right now our main focus is lee right so the concern is once this trough moves out, and I think it actually will, because more, more and more guidance is hinting at that because Lee is slowing down. Now, again, this is five, six, seven days away. So the time it is does uncertainty. And we talked about the upwelling that Franklin caused, a lot of lower, lower, you know, anomalies out here. But look where Lee is, it's further north. I mean, once you get past this, these are kind of like untouched waters. Yeah, you had, you know ideally in these areas but if that wasn't as intense what franklin was that set over these waters for an extended period of time so the, the, you know these waters are greatly warm down in these regions and that's another concern with this powerful system at some model guidance really doesn't have this weakening that much as it continues further north getting closer to the northeast here's the big picture right and this is what we talked about with this trough coming in this week, if we, with the slowness of Lee, this may have time for the trough to swing out and this high pressure to swing in. So if this high pressure is strong enough and the, and the, and the trough is moved out, this allows this high pressure to squeeze Lee back into the United States. And that is the concern. And the model guidance and the ensembles are actually trending that way unfortunately by next weekend so here's the latest icon guidance actually puts it closer into land if not making a landfall back into the nantucket region this could be a bona fide strong hurricane still across these regions now again this is kind of just one model but more guidance from the european the gfs the ensembles are showing that trend because it slowed down right all, you know, before that, before the slowness, I mean, we were saying, hey, that trough's gonna pick it up and swing it out. But because it slowed down, it might buy time enough to allow that trough to actually swing out by then. And by the time Lee gets up there, the trough won't be there, right? It'll, it'll feel the effects of that ridge coming in from the back door and that will squeeze Lee out to the west and that will squeeze it towards the United States. So that is the concern and this still could be a powerful hurricane here are some estimated winds 100 miles an hour folks going into portions of nantucket and to boston so this is definitely of concern so right now i would probably say from new york city to to nova scotia you're gonna have to keep high alert and we'll keep you updated on this channel every every day i'll be doing daily updates on this storm and tracking this storm every step of the way but right now, it definitely has has me concerned about the Northeast as we head into this weekend because of the slowing down of Lee. And if that does come to fruition, obviously that's going to be pushing some very heavy rain. So you got the trough moving in that's also going to be bringing the heavy rain. But of course, Lee will bring the heavier rain with it. But look at all the beneficial rains across the middle of the country. The West gets left out. Sorry, guys. Not much happening up there in the Northwest and much of the West Coast. 
but you'll have these pulses of energy coming off the northwest flow that'll ring out the precipitations really starting into the four corners regions but really maximizing as it heads into eastern colorado into kansas especially into oklahoma especially into the texas panhandle and that gets heavier as you extend into you know portions of west texas central texas and even south texas i mean look almost the entire state of texas there gets at least some rain for the week ahead and then this will be moving across and of course we'll be watching uh lee but yeah very active week cool down ahead for many and then of course we'll be watching the overall track of what lee on this channel so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update why protect you before and after the storm